Now that that run is completed, let's return to the two flow, sorry, the drainage network editor. And I'd like to move back to that head wall and off to the catchment tab. So you'll notice that for this head wall, we do have a one hectare catchment plus we have the rainfall on grid. If we wanted to, we could erase this and have just the rainfall on grid. So I'm going to finish the drainage network editor and move down to select read results. Now it's asked us to select the log file again. This time you'll notice that there's been an extra entry in the log file. The moment we run the 1D drainage, we've added the capability to run more than one storm event at a time. So in this case, we ran the 25 minute storm event. If we had more storm events selected inside our 1D hydro file, we would have a log file for each one of these events. And by selecting the corresponding log file, that would determine the event that we were going to watch. Well, in this case, we've only run one, so we'll select the 25 minute event, come down and select read results. So now you'll notice once again that the contours have updated. If we come back and redraw this view, you'll see there's our new tin. So it's gone a little bit higher this time. And also, because we've connected the culvert, you can see down here the water is bubbling back out of the culvert, creating a somewhat higher water level that you could see here. And then, of course, the flow dissipates in the downstream direction. If we re regenerate this long section, you can see the same thing. The water levels come up almost to the head wall. If we'd like to see the velocities that are resulting, once again, we would go to the tin and change that to be our velocity vectors. Select the set button, pardon me, and go back and re Now you'll notice that the time step is now 421 available rather than the previous 36. The reason for this is when we run the 1D, it runs the 25 minute storm. Now it goes far beyond just the 20, sorry, the 25 minute storm. It goes to 90 minutes so that we can observe the peak and the tailwater conditions. So let's move this one just aside a little bit for the moment. We'll move this one down. And let's go back to our drainage network editor. I'm going to choose the upstream end of that head wall. And I'm going to go to my results tab. And I'm going to ask to see all link results for that pipe. Selecting the enter key. Sorry, selecting the enter key. And let's go maximize this. What we're seeing here is the water from that event coming through, filling it up, and then eventually reaches a constant flow because that's the rainfall on grid that's constantly flowing through that pipe. Up here you can see the upstream and the downstream water levels. Now the reason I brought you back there was to see that the maximum water levels occurred at the end of the job. So if we come back to our controller, I'm going to go to 420 and then ask for the next time step. And then we'll just go hide this so we can just take a look at this one results. All right. And now what we're looking at are the velocity contours at the maximum from the entire job. If we were to come back and to toggle off our contours, once again we would see the velocity arrows. And if we'd like that scale to be larger, last time we went to five in the end, and set that, go to our previous time step. Now you can see the velocity vectors that are resulting from the water coming out of the culvert. And if we zoom in a little bit closer, these velocities are so slow on this upstream side because the water is much deeper in this area. And you've got your somewhat higher velocities here coming into the head wall of your culvert.